There's a form of terrorism that most people are not discussing. The politicians nor the preachers. Pedophiles target unsuspecting families. There is an urgent need to guard our children from sexual abuse. Please help us to protect children who cannot protect themselves. This is a great opportunity to literally save lives. Please join with us now. to welcome actor John Chapin to our program today to talk to him not only about his journey as an actor but what it's been like for him over the years to bring characters to life and of course see the way that audiences have responded to him. More recently you've seen him of course as Warlock on the hit show on the Oprah Winfrey Network, The Haves and the Have Nots. But John, thank you so much for the time today. Thank you. Thank you for having me, sir. You know, I was just messing with you before we went on here, John, because, you know, of course, you know, when you and I have talked on the radio show before, you know, we've talked about that you are so much more than a stereotype. You know, yeah. so much more than that you just bring characters to life and that's exactly what you've been able to do throughout your career I mean but what has it been like for you man to have fans literally around the world man who not only recognize your work thanks to social media but are supporting you and following you man, it means everything to me I mean that's that's what we as actors you know, hope for is to reach the audience and that they gravitate to the work so when mm -hmm. I get stopped by you know people who are fans of the show it's, it's very humbling and uh, it's hard to put in words, but it's, it's an amazing feeling. I'm just glad that people really gravitate towards the show and to the character. And, mm -hmm. and uh, they can see the difference between me and Warlock when we meet. You know, <laughs> I get the hard times. like, oh my God, you're nothing like Warlock. Yeah. You're not like what I expected. I was like, well, you know. I'm acting, so. <laughs> right, right. You, you know, uh, one of the things we talk about on the show a lot, uh, John, is discovering our why. We try to encourage our audience to go for that thing that makes them happy, that, I mean, that really brings out the best of themselves. When did you know that was acting for you? When I was young, watching The Five Heartbeats, you know, and uh, I used to reenact that at home for my parents and their friends, whoever would watch. I would reenact Five Heartbeats, I would reenact, you know, uh, Jim Carrey, Fire Marshal Bill, you know, of course, The Living Color, uh, Shawshank Redemption. I would just start mm -hmm. watching a lot of movies and I would start memorizing the lines and then I would start performing them. And then it, I just felt like, you know, I like doing this. I like the reaction that I get when I, when I do it. And then so when I got into uh, high school, I started taking uh, drama classes and started doing plays in school and it just... Right there, that just, you know, the fire was lit and it was ready to go from there. Yeah. And now here you are, you know, able to be on these shows, seen literally around the world. Again, as I mentioned earlier, having fans all over the place. Does it make it even reinforced for you, John, that you are following the path that was meant for you? It does. I mean, when I get people, you know, the fans on Twitter and Instagram, and I read all my comments, and, you know, I thank you all for all the beautiful uh, words of inspiration. And, but when, when people say, man, you're amazing, you know, uh, you're truly gifted, that's that's like affirmation, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's just those affirmations, it's confirmation, it just lets me know that, you know what, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, people yeah. are gravitating towards it, and they and they believe in, in me without even knowing who I am, they just sure. believe in, uh, in my talent and, and, and what it is that I'm trying to do, so... For me, it's it's the ultimate, you know. When I when I get fans that say they love the work, they love the show, they love the character, they love the plot twists and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, it just makes me feel like you know what, this I'm, there may be something to this. Maybe I am on the right path. Right, right. We're gonna get um, more into Warlock here in a moment, uh, John. But I want to talk to you about courage and fear because it's one of the things that we talk about a lot on, on our radio show as well as on Cyrus Web Presents here for our television audience in Mississippi and also online. Because I, I think a lot of people will look at you and they say, you know what, man? I've always wanted to do X, Y, or Z, but I just never thought I could. Or so and so told me that I couldn't do it. How did you get over, you know, what you could have told yourself or what others may have told you, and just gone for your dreams? Um, I don't know if you ever really get over it. Uh, it's just something that you push through. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm human, and I have my own doubts, and I have my own fears and wonders. Uh, 
you know, sometimes I wonder, is it going to work? Is it going to, you know, be, will I be successful at it? But, you know, you have to push through that fear, you know. Uh, and I think that's what faith is. Faith isn't the absence of fear. It's, it's moving in spite of that fear, you know, in spite of that doubt, in spite of those worries, you still push forward. So I don't know if there was ever, um, if I can identify a specific moment in time when that happened, it was just an accumulation of moments that allowed me to just, you know, go for it and push for it and say, you know what, despite how I may feel about myself or, you know, whatever insecurities I may have, I feel like this is my calling and I'm going to push for it in spite of. And so I, that's the only real advice I could give to people is that, you know, don't think of it as how do I get over it? Mm -hmm. You know, just how do you get past it? How do right. you push through it? Right. You know, because we are all humans and we are all going to have insecurities and doubts and, and worry, but you have to continue to go on. You know, you got to push through that. And by doing that, you really discover a lot about yourself and what you are capable of. Like I said, I didn't know that this was in my future. Right. I didn't know that I would be here, you know, talking with you and, you know, on a show that, you know, has millions of, of viewers every week. You know, that was just always something I hoped. Right. And wish for it. And by me pursuing that uh, that dream and that passion and, you know, jumping over those hurdles of fear and, and, and uh, confidence along the way, that's allowed me to be, you know, here where I am right now. Right. Again, everyone, you're watching Cyrus Webb Presents here in Los Angeles. We're here with John Chapin. You know him as an actor. He's been able to bring different roles to life, especially more recently on The Haves and the Have Nots as the character of Warlock. We're going to wrap up talking about Warlock. Warlock, Warlock, Warlock. John. <laughs> I tell you, you know, let me tell you what's so great about this. It's been three seasons now, right? Yeah, Since we yeah. first were introduced to, to, to Warlock. And we've seen different things happen. There was a line, though, in this last season, this current season that's complaining now, that really struck me when he was talking to the character Candace played by Tika Sumter where he said to her you broke the code and you broke my heart I mean what has it been like for you man to show these different sides of this character I mean normally you're able to play a different character in different shows you've been able to play a different you know side of this character on season to season to season what has that been like it's, it's been amazing I mean that's what we all hope for as actors is to be able to grow and expand and show what we can do you know our range and I have to give all the credit to Tyler uh, Mr. Perry has written an excellent, superb script, and he's really uh, allowed me to really explore and play with the character. And he's given me the freedom and the range to, to, to go there, you know. And mm -hmm. he writes it, and, you know, we, we say, you sure? You know, <laughs> like, you know uh, Warlock is going to be, you know, I don't know if too many people are going to like me after this, but, you know, he, he trusts me, you know. Yeah. And he's like, go there. I'm saying and, and that's what we want to see we don't want to see one dimensional sure you know characters because we're like I said before we're not playing I'm or I'm not portraying a stereotype mm -hmm. I'm playing people I'm playing right. a real person and, and all of us are layered you know we all have different sides nobody's you know uh, hard 24 7 you know what I'm saying you know the, the gangsters they have soft sides you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying and so for me to be able to show that side of Warlock it's been, you know, a great blessing because now people can really get a, a sense of who he is and what makes him tick. And then they are not only looking at him as just, you know, a thug, but mm -hmm. somebody who is, you know, an actual, you know, real feeling, you know, a human being who has, you know, emotions that, you know, everybody goes through. Sure. You know, we're all experience love. We all experience disappointment. We all experience fear. You know, we're not immune to any of those things so uh, when I tell Candace that she broke the code and she broke my heart it's it's deeper than just you know uh, her you know betraying me and not giving me you know the amount of money that you know she I felt that she should have mm -hmm. but it's it's deeper in that you know Warlock is a very loyal person you sure. know what I'm saying loyalty is everything to me you right. know and even though he chose to go down a different path, what I'm showing is that he's somebody who could have went down another path if he chose to. Right. You know, and so by giving him the layers and showing that uh, vulnerability, you know, that allows people to really open up to him. And it's been 
It's been amazing. I, I really thought people were going to hate Warlock, but it seems like people like him even more now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they feel like, yeah, she did him wrong. Candace right. did him wrong. So, you know, I don't know how people are going to like me <laughs> after some of the upcoming episodes come right, out. Right. But, you know, because y'all haven't seen anything yet. It's, oh, wow. I go way off <laughs> the cliff somewhere <laughs> and just don't come back. I don't know if there's any saving Warlock, man. He's, well. Yeah, he's out there. <laughs> well, it really gives us something to look forward to, John, as our conversations always do. Again, everyone, John Chapin has been our guest. Make sure you all are watching the haves and the have-nots on Tuesday nights. Of course, that's on the Oprah Winfrey Network. Check your local listings for that. And, John, how can our viewers stay connected with you, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Instagram, uh, JohnBoy1914. That's J-O-N-B-O-Y-1914. I'm on Twitter, at John Chafin. Uh, I just started Snapchatting, so, you know, I'm having some fun with that. So, uh, Snapchat is my same handle as Instagram. It's JohnBoy1914. And uh, uh, Facebook, I'm at uh, John Chafin. I have a fan page there as well, and I'm very active on that fan page as well. So, they can find me there. All right. Well, John, man, thank you so much for being a part of our visit here to Los Angeles. Really appreciate it, and looking forward to the next conversation with you, man. Thank you, Cyrus. I appreciate it. Right. And thank you all for watching another edition of Cyrus Web Presents.